Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to hide a field in a continuous form. Today's question comes from Bruce from Plano, Texas, one of my gold members. Bruce says, I have an order list form, which is a continuous form, showing all of my recent orders. On there is a ship date. Is there any way to hide the date field completely if the order type is online instead of shipped? I tried setting the visible property to no in the on current event, but that hides all of them. Yes, Bruce, unfortunately, if you change properties like the visible property or the background or foreground color using your VB code in a continuous form, it changes all of the controls on that form. So all the form controls that you see are going to go invisible whether they've got that value or not. So let me show you a technique in this video, how to get around that. Okay, so here's my basic customer template. You can download this from my website. There's a link down below the video for my blank customer template. And let's add an order table like Bruce has in his database. So let's go to create and then table design. We'll have an order ID, that's our auto number. We'll have a customer ID linking it back to the customer. We'll have an order type ID. That'll also be a number. Now this will link to a different table. We don't have to make the whole table for the purposes of this video, but let's just say in here that one equals an online order and two is going to be shipped. All right, so we'll, we'll say that if this order type is one, then it's an online order. We'll hide the ship date field. Okay, if it's a shipped order, then we need to see it. Okay, then we'll of course have an order date, which is a date time, and then our ship date, which is also a date time. And this right here will be the field that we're hiding if this order type is one. All right, let's save this. I'll save this as my order T. Okay, and if you're not familiar with how all this stuff works, I cover all of this in my previous videos on how to make relationships and all that stuff. Again, I'll put links to other videos down below. Now let's make a continuous form to see all of our orders. All right, so I have in the blank template, I have a continuous form already set up, this continuous F. Open that up, okay, design view. And again, if you don't know what a continuous form is, it's where you see a whole list of different records on the same screen, okay, it's a continuous form. Again, I've got other videos on how to make continuous forms. I'll put a link down below, watch that first, then come back here. But the first thing I'm going to do in my continuous form is open it up here. Actually, let me copy this guy. Let's copy this. Copy, paste. We'll call this my order F. All right, now design view. Come into here. Set the record source first. We're going to make this our order table. So it's bound to our orders. Make sure it's a continuous form right here under default view. Then we can set our properties in here. So the ID, for example, would be our order ID. All right, put it in the control source and the name. And of course, up here in the label if you want to. Um, I'm going to skip all the rest of the stuff like the customer ID. Really, all we care about in here is the order type ID, right? The order type. And this guy here will be the order type ID. Copy, paste that. And then we need two more fields. Copy, paste, slide that over here. This one is going to be the order date. Order date, like that. Copy, paste, order date. And we'll copy and paste this one more time. Copy, paste. And this will be the ship date. Ship date, copy and paste, okay. Now, let's save that, close it. All right, open it up. So some orders in here. Of course, you'd have customers, all that stuff. So let's say this is an online order, and it's I just hit the control semicolon to put today's date in there, okay? Another online order, control semicolon, whatever. All right, let's put a two in there. Two is going to be shipped. So this one, we do want to see the ship date, all right? Same thing. And then another two. Okay, and the order date's really kind of meaningless. And then another one. All right, and of course you'd have a combo box here for the you know to pick the order type, and this would open up a bigger order form with all the details. But you get the point. 
So for my shipped dates right over here, all right, these will actually have ship values. The online orders don't get shipped. It's, it's downloadable. Like I used to ship CDs, and I used to have to keep track of when I shipped them. Okay, but online orders that are downloaded, you don't have to have that. So we want to hide these fields completely. But in here, you'll have a ship date, right? Okay, now Bruce wants to hide this field completely. Now here's how you would normally do this on a single form, okay? You're going to go to Design View. And, and to hide any particular field in here, all right, based on some value, we're going to go in the on current event. Okay, the on current event is right here under events. The on current event fires when you move from record to record. All right, let me show you. Let me show you first in a regular like the customer form here. Okay, let's say, and this is hypothetical. Let's say if the state is Florida, I want to hide the zip code. Yeah, I'm just picking something out of thin air. But here's how it works. Design view, open it up, right? Go to events, on current, hit the dot, dot, dot button that opens up your Visual Basic Builder. Okay, I just shrank it down to fit on the screen. You might get a window up asking you what builder you want. Pick the code builder. That's what we're going to always use. So in here, I'm going to say if state equals Florida, that's a field on my form, then zip dot visible equals false. Otherwise, because you have to take into consideration what happens if it's not Florida, zip.visible equals true, right? So we're going to hide the zip code for people in Florida. Why? I don't know. That's just what I picked. Okay. So now when I open this up, notice zip code is missing because this person's from Florida. Go to the next record, and now it shows up. Okay. That's how you can hide fields on a single form moving from record to record. However, if you try doing that here, let's say... We have, um, let's actually, let's go to our order form, this guy. Let's say we have a situation where if order type equals one, then I want to hide the ship date. So again, design view, come into the on current event, dot, 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 right there. If order type ID equals one, then it's an online order. And in fact, something like this, I have to put a little note here because what is order type ID one, right? Online order. All right, then it's going to be ship date dot visible equals false, else ship date dot visible equals true. And if you have more than two conditions, you can put in there, you know, else if two, else if three, and so on. All right, All right, else right here, shipped. Okay, save it, close it close this down. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Okay. Now, they're all missing. Let's click on one of these with the two. They all show up. What's going on? As I move from record to record, my on current event is firing. But when you change the property of a control on a continuous form, it changes all of them. It's technically one control. You're just seeing multiple copies of it. Okay, so you can't change things like the visible property, the background color, the foreground color, the font, the font bold, all that stuff. It'll change all of them. The only thing you can do to get away with this is to use conditional formatting. All right, so let's go in here. Let's remove the on current event. Just get rid of the whole thing. Delete. Goodbye. All right. We don't need you. We're going to use conditional formatting because conditional formatting will work between the records. All right, so go to format, click on ship date. All right, that's the field we want to format. Conditional formatting. All right, new rule. Now, we want to use a different field to perform the conditional formatting. So we have to change this to expression is. Okay, I have another video that covers this in detail. I'll put a link down below. It's, con it's conditional formatting on a different field. All right, the value that we're looking for is in order type ID. So put in here, now here you gotta be careful. If you just put in order type ID, then access will convert that to a string. So you have to make sure you put the brackets around it here. All right, this is one of those places where you have to make sure you use them. Okay, so if order type ID equals one, then you have to set it to some color with conditional formatting. So just pick a color down here. Let's just set it equal to yellow. We'll come back in here in a minute and make it better. All right, hit OK, hit OK. Close that, save yes, open it up, and there you go. Look at that. The fields that are online orders where order type ID is 1 are now yellow. So if you want to make them look like they're not there, the best thing to do is just match the foreground color with the background color. All right, right here. 
So, design view, come into here, go into the properties for your detail section. Now, I like to use standard colors, all right? These standard colors down here. I don't use these colors up top because you get accent two lighter 60. No, I don't want that. All right, I want these standard colors down here. And I think the one we have is that guy, right? Yeah. All right, these are hex colors. And I don't use the alternating back colors. I I think those look dumb. All right, they're, they're okay on printouts when you print stuff out, but on the screen, nah, I don't like them. All right, so bottom line is make sure these both match. Copy one of those, all right? Now, come into your conditional formatting again. Format, conditional formatting. All right, open this guy up. Change the background color to go to custom and paste that in right there. Okay, there it is. Now, make the foreground color the same thing. It'll show, down, show up down here on recent colors. See, now it looks like there's nothing there. Okay, hit OK. Apply. OK. Save it. Close it up. And then reopen it. And now look, it looks like it's gone. Yeah, there's still a border there. You can kind of see that. There's nothing you can do about that unless you want to turn off all the borders. All right, but I think that's, that's fine. It looks like it's not there. Now, what you can do, because you can still technically type in here, what you should do also is you don't want them putting some value in there because right now I, I'm actually typing, okay, and nothing's happening. Let's see. One. Let's see if I can get something in here. Yeah, yeah. See, so you can actually type values in there, okay? But what you could do is you can lock that field using your on current event so they can't type values in there. All right, see, I entered a value because I, I couldn't see what I was typing. Okay, yeah, and if you highlight it. Now, see, sometimes you can still see it depending on your color scheme. So in this case, what we can also do is go into Design View, go back to our on current event, and now we'll say in here, if order type ID equals one, then we gotta make those locked. So ship date dot locked equals true, else ship date dot locked equals false. Yes, this will lock all of them, but it's not a visible change, so it doesn't matter. Okay, this is locked right here, and I can't type anything in there. It looks like I still got a value stuck in that field. Let me go, let me go see what I did here. Hold on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I typed that in when I wasn't just when I was just goofing around. Okay, come back into here. All right, now I can't type in there, but if I click down here, I can. See, it doesn't matter if you use properties like that because when you move from record to record, it gets reset. But colors, and visible visible property, all those kinds of things will show up in here. Okay, so that's how you do it. Unfortunately, conditional formatting doesn't support changing the border property. So there's no real way around that. You're just going to have to live with it. But at least this visibly looks better for your users. Okay, they get the point. You could do the same thing if you wanted to make this gray. You, didn't have, you don't have to necessarily match that background and foreground color like I did. All right, you could just gray these out, and that indicates that they can't type there. But the bottom line is that's how you change the values like that on a... Con and on a continuous form is using conditional formatting. You can't use things like visible, all right, foreground color, background color, all those things, because it'll apply to all of them. So that's pretty much it. I don't have an extended cut for this one. This is only supposed to be a quick, simple video, and I really can't think of anything extra to add for an extended cut. So they're not all, they don't all have extended cuts, but most of them do. And if you want to get access to the extended cuts, then you can become a member and Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. 
Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page, and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.